brand like Royal Enfield, renowned for its retro charm and affordable pricing, deviates from the formula that has earned it widespread acclaim. The stakes are undeniably high. Last year, when Royal Enfield introduced the 2024 Himalayan, powered by a liquid-cooled DOHC 452 cubic centimeters engine as a successor to its beloved 411 cubic centimeters air-cooled model, it was met with positive reception from both the press and the public. While modern design and innovation are crucial in the ADV world, the question remains, how does this shift impact Royal Enfield's core standards? We traveled to Barcelona, Spain, to find out if the brand's second model, powered by the new Sherpa single, lives up to the challenge. This model will be a decisive test of whether a more contemporary approach can resonate with Royal Enfield's traditional audience. What's in a name? Royal Enfield has dubbed this new model the Gorilla 450, emphasizing its departure from the norm. According to Ari, while many small single-cylinder standards tend to mimic each other in appearance and performance, the Gorilla 450 stands out as a non-conformist. However, while it may not be revolutionary within its segment, it is breaking new ground within the Royal Enfield lineup, making it a disruptive force, challenging the old guard. Engine. At the heart of the Gorilla 450 is a liquid-cooled 452 cubic centimeters DOHC single engine, known as the Sherpa. This marks Royal Enfield's first-ever liquid-cooled engine in its 124-year history. Although the company has recently introduced several new engine platforms, such as the 350 cubic centimeters J platform, 411 cubic centimeters L platform, and 650 cubic centimeters P platform, all of these have been air or oil cooled. While these engines have served their purposes well, a modern standard requires a modern engine. This new Oversquare engine features an 84.0 mm bore and 81.5 mm stroke, a compression ratio of 11.5 to 1, and a 4-valve DOHC head. A forged piston operates within a nickel-coated cylinder bore, while a ride-by-wire 42 mm throttle body feeds a downdraft intake where electronic fuel injection regulates the fuel mixture. Power is transferred through a cable-actuated wet multi-plate slip-slash-assist clutch to a six-speed gearbox. Royal Enfield claims the Gorilla 450 generates 39.5 horsepower at 8,000 RPM and 29.5 pound-ft of torque, figures identical to those of the Himalayan, as the engines are identical in every specification and detail. Chassis While it may be tempting to assume that the Gorilla is simply based on the Himalayan due to their similar-looking chassis. The reality is that these two models were developed concurrently, and there are significant differences. Both bikes use a steel tube frame with the engine as a stressed member, but the frame dimensions are distinct. The Gorilla features a steep 21.8 degree steering rake with a trail of 3.6 inches. It has a wheelbase of 56.7 inches and a seat height of 30.7 inches, which is quite accessible, Though there's a taller option available, but no lower one. These are all favorable dimensions for a standard or roadster. The suspension system is provided by Showa at both ends. The front suspension consists of a non-adjustable 43 mm conventional fork with 5.5 inches of travel, while the rear features a preload adjustable monoshock with linkage, offering 5.9 inches of wheel travel. Both wheels are made of cast aluminum, Fitted with 120 divided by 70 R minus 17 and 160 divided by 60 R minus 17 C grip XL tires. Electronics. The Gorilla 450 isn't overloaded with electronic rider aids. It comes with two ride modes, performance and eco. The eco mode slightly reduces power delivery by limiting throttle opening and fuel input to enhance fuel efficiency. ABS is standard and cannot be switched off which is typical for a model like this. There are two dashboard options available on the Gorilla. The base model comes with an analog unit that includes an LCD info screen, accompanied by Royal Enfield's Tripper Navigation Pod. While functional and adequate, the real highlight is the round 4-inch Tripper TFT unit available on higher trips. This digital display offers three screen layouts tailored to the rider's preference. The analog layout features a circular decometer with speed, gear indicator, and trip info, along with turn-by-turn -turn navigation if connected to the Royal Enfield app. 
The digital layout places trip info and navigation front and center, alongside attach and speedometer. The navigation layout dedicates the upper two-thirds of the screen to a Google-based map, with essential writing information displayed below. Each screen is easy to read and makes sense at a glance. Connecting to the Tripper Dash with the RE app is quick, with the app actually taking a photo of the Dash info to connect directly and simply. The app does need to run in order to feed the navigation info to the Tripper Dash, so long rides will require the ability to charge. Thoughtfully, Royal Enfield included a USB-C connection on the bars, but storage will be up to you. Jacket or a tank bag. Riding impression. Engine. With a flick of the start slash run slash off dial, the gorilla pops to life with a quick idle and pleasant thump. Right off the bat, it's clear this Sherpa engine is unlike the J and L platforms and is modern. Cracking the throttle sweeps the needle through the rev counter quickly without any stumble or hesitation. Clicking into gear takes a light touch from your left toe while clutch engagement is communicative and predictable. On the road, it's time to feel the torque and power from the new engine. Snap the throttle and the Gorilla 450 jumps forward, moving from 3,000 RPM to the 9,000 RPM redline quickly and smoothly for a 39.5 horsepower machine. It's not going to snap your neck with acceleration, but for the displacement in class, it's plenty sporty. Gear spacing is perfect to keep you in the meat of the torque as you blast from corner to corner. Lugging the engine below 2,500 is possible, but it's a very rough, chunky affair. Royal Enfield says 70% of peak torque is available from 3,000 RPM to 8,000, and our seat of the pants dyno agrees. While fueling is well sorted overall on the Gorilla 450, there is a consistent stumble when shifting from first to second that produces a lurch forward when the bike recovers. This was repeated on a second bike. The stumble is more nothing than anything, but it's there. Changing the mode to Eco gives the Gorilla a more relaxed throttle response, but if you screw it to the stop, all of the power is still there. In this mode, an average claimed 55 miles per gallon was displayed on the dash. That's good for around 160 miles from the 2.9 gallon tank. When in performance mode and riding aggressively for photos and fun, mileage dropped to 39. Riding impression, chassis. Despite the non-adjustable suspension, except rear preload, action on all surfaces is very good. On smooth and grippy roads, there is enough holdup during cornering, braking, and acceleration to know exactly what the tires are doing. And those seat tires grip exceptionally well considering the scramblerish tread pattern. The harder you push, the better the handling gets. No flexing of the frame, no squirm to the tires, and no pogoing of the suspension. It just works. In town, you do feel potholes, cracks, and other rough patches of pavement. But it's not harsh or uncomfortable. You know when you hit the junk, but it won't upset the chassis or cause serious discomfort. Handling is light and quick, even with a claimed 408 pound wet weight, 90% full tank, that is significantly more than the competition. You don't ever feel the weight whether that be transitioning from one side of the tire to the other, putting around town, or maneuvering in a parking lot. 